Hi everyone, welcome back to a really sunny Norfolk. Today I want to share with you why uh, I've gone solar, solar PV on the house, and how that's working for me. Hopefully this will be of use to those that are considering it, or those that have already got it, for comparison purposes. Anyway, why on earth have I gone solar? So firstly, here it is, this is what's been installed. It's uh, from Eon Energy, they're 280 watt panels each, there's 14 of them. It generates 3.9 kilowatts of electricity as a maximum. That's 3.6 net that can come out of the inverter. So 3.6 is all I'm gonna get. I'm virtually directly south facing and uh, the roof's at a good angle so I'm getting actually really good coverage on these panels. The inverter, it's not one of these new inline smart inverter things uh, because I don't have any shaded areas, it doesn't need balancing out, so just an ordinary cheap inverter. Okay, here's all the configuration of the electronics. This is inside my garage. So starting from the left-hand side, this is the joint box that comes from the mains feed from the mains cabinet, which goes to my consumer unit. Then we've got my alarm system, and we've got the uh, breaker there, that's for my zappy charger. We've got the Solis inverter here, and we've got a separate breaker here uh, for the solar as well. So basically, let's see if we can find it. Up here we've got the um, power cables that are coming in from the solar panels. They come down into the inverter, then out of the inverter, they come out here along this line, back up in here into the switch, back up to the mains, and basically, if the house is consuming electricity, it gets consumed. If it's not, it goes back out to the grid over here. And that's basically it. That's the configuration. Uh, there's not a lot to show on the inverter. Um, basically, it tells me if it's on, a status, a power, and it tells me how much we're generating. Currently, 2.5 kilowatts, so not too bad. There's no, <laughs> there's no really clever features on here. Um, it's a quite dumb device, the inverter. What I have invested in is this little thing here, a Wi-Fi dongle that plugs in the bottom. That sends the generation data off to China and uh, posts it on a website there. Then on a website, I can access and see whether my system's online and also see how much it's using and generating. Basically, that's about 10 minutes behind. It's not particularly reliable. It's I think it's a bit cheap and nasty. It probably works for people that have got lots and lots of solar configurations, but uh, I don't think it's very good. Little bo device at the bottom here, uh, that's the meter that's uh, recording how many kilowatts, how many units I'm actually generating. That's what I would use to submit to um, the Fit Tariff Company, the energy company, for um, my payments. And then we've got an isolation switch here, and there's a second one underneath get my finger right where's my finger there's another one here so um, basically I've left with a set of instructions on the wall that tell me how to isolate and uh, how to turn on and off the configuration should I ever need to then here this is where the power cable comes in from the solar panels so they drop it down into the loft and then uh, from the loft out through the wall down into my garage and it's really really neat one very small hole into my tiles uh, completely waterproof no issues there at all and it's out of sight can't see it the panels themselves are fitted onto aluminium rails those are nailed into or screwed into the battens on the roof and basically they're there solid you don't have to have any holes in the roof nothing protrudes through into your loft space and uh, it's neat and tidy so still waterproof still fine no damage no disruption very easy and quick to install Inside the house I have an old British gas smart meter, so this isn't set up on any tariff, it's not submitting my meter readings etc, but it is still plugged into the electric cable and uh, it's still monitoring how much energy we're using. So if I press the kilowatts here, we're currently using zero pence because there's no tariff configured, but zero watts, uh, none whatsoever. So far today, and uh, it's 10, half 10 in the morning now, 0.97 kilowatt hours all the way from midnight Yesterday is an entire day, 2.95 to 24 hours. That's all we use, nearly three units of electricity. For the week, 57. Well, that's a lot more than the three <laughs> times uh, seven, isn't it? But that's because I charged the Kona, I put 40 kilowatt hours in. So that leaves me with the big question, why? Why did I go solar in the first place? And basically it's a long-term strategy. I haven't looked at it from what savings I might get in year one, two, and three. I've looked at it from 
further down the line. I'm 52 now. Um, I should be getting my pension at 55 and obviously state pension at 67. But what I'm interested in is when I'm in my 60s, how much will my electricity bills be? And what pension will I be claiming and how much of that will go on actually running the house? If you look at the costs of electricity from the consumer point of view in the last 10 years, it's gone up a phenomenal amount of money. So if it goes up to the same degree or more, electricity is going to be really expensive in the future. So the idea with solar for me is to basically cap the price to use as much electricity as I can for free that I'm generating and I won't have that overhead, that obligation from an energy company. Yes, I'll have to pay a daily standard rate, a standard fee of what at the moment it's 20 pence a day and then for any units I do consume. But if I'm reducing my actual energy consumption by between 50 and 90 percent, and that's what I'm hoping for, then I'm going to be quids in into the future. And basically, I don't need to claim such a large pension because I won't have such large outgoings. Overall, I'm expecting the solar to recoup its costs uh, within five to six years, but everything after that is free. And when you've got compound impacts, so the impact of the savings this year, then the compound impact of adding interest onto that and adding the reduction of cost increases, etc. Then every year that I keep the solar, every year the costs are reducing and the savings are growing. So by the time I get to six, seven and eight years from now, the money that I've got coming in from the solar won't be big. But the impact that I'm having on reducing my costs will be really big. And that's why I've gone solar, because I want to future proof my costs for the future. I've installed my solar system in early January. It was literally the first week of the new year and uh, it's probably the worst time to install it because it's midwinter. So the panels are either covered in snow, in dew, um, we've got lots of rain, it's really cloudy days. Uh, some days I've seen we're generating as little as 100 watts. 100 watts of electricity. I can hardly run a couple of light bulbs. So yeah, it powers um, the fridge when it comes on. That's it. That's all it powers. Or it powers a few LEDs and the television on standby. So on the worst day where it's completely black clouds and it's raining hard, very, very little energy is coming up. But on other days, even in midwinter in the weeks of January, when the sun comes up early at half past seven to eight o'clock in the morning, it's generating enough electricity to power the house for free. By the time I'm up, um, say half past eight to nine o'clock. Right now here in February, there's enough free electricity to cook our breakfast, boil the kettle, to put a wash on. Now by half past nine, we've done our morning routines and it's all been, or virtually all, for free. As I said, it's the middle of February right now and uh, basically we have done those morning routines and it has been almost for free. And I've plugged the car in as well. The cone is plugged in and it's charging currently at 2.5 kilowatts. So I'm getting free energy into the car I've hardly used energy, any energy at all in the house. And basically it just feels good. It feels good doing things the right way round, not consuming lots of electricity and having to pay from it from an energy supplier that's drawing from uh, energy supplies like coal and nuclear and gas and those sort of things. So I'm very, very happy with what we've done. It's, it's more than just being green. It's more than just saving money though. I find there's a fun factor. It is really enjoyable knowing you switch a kettle on and zero watts are being used. It's amazing. On average in the winter, I used to consume between eight and 10 units of electricity every single day. And now we're consuming on average about four. So midwinter, I've at least halved my energy consumption. Um, the solar is making that big a difference now in winter. So in the summer, ah, it's got to be like 90%. It's got to be something absolutely phenomenal. So although the electricity that I'll be paying for will be minimum, one or two units a day, uh, and the standing charge, when you add in the tariff that I'm getting from the feed-in tariff in the UK, they're paying me for what I'm generating, and they're paying me for what I send back out to the grid. Then on top of that, I'm getting free electricity in my car. It's free fuel, so when all the free chargers around run out and uh, you have to pay for them, I'm still getting free electricity at home. The good thing that I'm noticing as well is it's not just free when it's generating one, two, three kilowatts of electricity at a time. It's also subsidized. It's 
cheaper rate. It's say half price when you're generating at a lower rate as well. So let's say it's a cloudy day and I'm only generating five, six, seven, eight hundred watts of electricity. Well, that's not enough to power the car because the car requires 1.3 or 1.4. Well, with my Zappi charger, that can integrate that solar energy with some power from the grid from another 0.5, from another 500 watts, 600 watts, 700 watts, whatever's needed. It can add that to it and basically charge my car at the minimum rate. And as more sun comes out, I get more power into the car. As less power comes from the sun, I can get more power from the grid. And I can configure how much I want it to come from the grid and how green I want to be. The benefit of that is I'm not getting free electricity in the car but I'm effectively getting half price electricity from the car. So even at 500 watts of electricity being generated, it's still a subsidized amount of cost on charging my car. So for me, it feels like I'm getting economy seven rates in the middle of the day. Um, and for me, that suits because I'm retired, I'm at home more, I'm not out during the day as much. So I charge during the day. I don't need to charge overnight. I'm not going to talk in too much detail on this video about the Zappi charger, but in essence, if you've got an ordinary charger which isn't smart and you plug your car in to charge, it'll be charging at the maximum rate that you can draw from that socket for the car. So for me, that would be 7.2 kilowatts. So if I'm only generating one kilowatt of solar, then I'm putting in six from the grid and one from solar. The Zappi is smart enough and configurable that I can tone that right down to only put in 1.3 to 2, I can have a much lower rate of charge going into the car, which means the proportion that I'm putting in from solar is much higher. Yes, it takes longer to charge, but that's the flexibility you've got. You can either charge quickly if you want to, or slowly and maximize the sun. That's the advantage of a smart charger that can vary the charge that goes into your car. And lastly, one of the big questions I'll probably be asked is how much does it cost? Well, they installed it inside a day, scaffolding was put up and taken down, and everything included, it was just under £5,000 from Eon Energy. They were significantly cheaper than some of the local companies that were going to charge £8,500 for the same sort of configuration, but I'll, I must admit, with probably a better quality and more featured inverter and higher powered panels. So instead of having 3.9 kilowatts on the roof, I could have probably had more with 330 watt solar panels instead of the 280s that I've got. So yes, I could have paid more and got more, but for the amount of payback and the amount of generation that I needed, to me, a 3.9 kilowatt P system, uh, the maximum that it can generate, I thought that was enough and the cost justification, it paid back sooner. So to me, it made better sense to spend less and receive adequate amounts of benefit from it. I could have spent more as a bigger luxury. I could have put a battery on, for example, as well. And that would have cost a lot more. Adding a battery, even a small one, would have almost doubled the installation cost and it just didn't pay back. I mean, if I'm going to save already between 50 and 90% of my electricity costs, why would I pay the same amount again to gain an extra 10 or 20% of my electricity? It just doesn't make sense. Yes, I could benefit more potentially by charging overnight with Economy 7 and using those units during the day in the winter. So there's some benefit potential there. But for me, Economy 7 doesn't make sense. So if I haven't got Economy 7, I can't do that anyway. So having a battery just did not work for me. What can you realistically expect to gain on a sunny day in the middle of February in the UK? Well, today I'm going to top up my hot water. Well, in fact, it has already topped up for free. Um, I'm also charging my car, the Kona Electric. That's going to be adding about 10%, 9%, 10% battery state of charge for free. Uh, I cooked breakfast for free, had a couple of teas and coffees, all for free, haven't used any energy at all. So that's quite a lot on a winter's day. Admittedly, it is a gorgeous day out there today. This chart that's coming from the data collection from the inverter, it's showing February's generation. And as you can see, the weather's improving, but the daylight hours are increasing. And gradually, every day, we're getting more and more electricity generated. Anyway, there you go. That's the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sharing my videos and subscribing. More videos about electric cars, my electric Kona to come. If you've got any questions about my solar, uh, bounce them in the comments below and uh, I'll gladly reply to you. Take care. See you again soon. Bye-bye.